Hey, Charles, what are you doing? Drilling holes. Why are you drilling a hole, Charles? Because of Jason. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for that fantastic introduction, Charles, from HullMechanic.com. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> so in this video, we're going to be talking about four reasons why the VR6 engine is on its way out. It's not actually totally dead. Uh, Volkswagen still uses VR6 in a few of their models, yeah? Right. So we Volkswagen still has it in the new Atlas has it in the Passat and the Touareg. Okay, and then so, there is also a Porsche model that uses oh, okay. it as well. Cayenne? Cayenne. Cayenne, all right. Well, I think a more appropriate thing to be talking about engines dying would be Volkswagen's diesel engines. Uh, I would agree wholeheartedly. Because those are legitimately dead well, in the U.S. for now. Yes, portions of them, they're sort of in this weird hiatus state. Hanging out in random dealer lots. Random dealers and... And stadiums. Se sequestered to stadiums, we yeah. say. Just abandoned stadiums with abandoned cars. Mm. So anyways, we're going to talk about uh, VR6 engines, gasoline engines, and why these have kind of been phased out, what the latest and greatest replacement is. And I think it's also important to note that the newest generation VR is actually a little bit different from this one. Oh, yeah. This is a 15 degree angle. The newer ones are 10.6. Uh, I think there's also some 12 uh, degree angles. So it is similar, but not exactly And this the is same. a 2.8, and the new ones are 3.6? Correct. But that's why I have this, guys, as usual. A whiteboard. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> here, come this way. I'll, I'll hold it up. So here we have a comparison. The new 2018 Atlas uh, offers a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder. Thank you for the beautiful hands, Vanna White. Or a 3.6 liter VR6 engine. So here on the left, this is the base engine that it comes with, the 2 liter I4. And one of the things that's cool about it is you can see this nice flat torque curve versus on the right, looking at the VR6 engine's torque curve, which is naturally aspirated, you have a peak. And so there's really one point where that engine's at its most efficient and producing maximum torque. Versus turbocharged engines, you can tune the wastegate and the amount of boost that you have so that you have a perfectly flat torque curve, gives you a nice linear, uh, you know, throttle application. You know exactly what maximum torque is for a set RPM. It's the same thing going across. It gives the driver control. And so there's a benefit there to that. And you can see that it reaches that peak torque earlier on. Now, there, the VR6 does produce more power, 3.6 liter versus the 2 liter. Uh, but you're getting peak torque earlier with the 2 liter inline four-cylinder. And so, you know, earlier on in that much more usable range, this is a family, what would you call it, SUV? I don't know. Yeah, this is a seven-passenger SUV. Seven-passenger SUV. So it's not like you're ringing that engine out to you know, with your family in the car, you probably want some good mid-range torque. Right, this is not a GTI that we're, we're putting the tires and burning up rubber, this is a family car. So if you need all-wheel drive, the VR6 is the only one that offers it, but if you're going with front-wheel drive version, you can get the VR6 or the inline four. I think the inline four makes more sense because of that nice, beautiful torque curve. Now, the second reason I wanna talk about, and of course, we're gonna talk about efficiency, is efficiency. Yes. And so, you know, clearly there are fuel economy regulations. There are reasons why you want to be efficient. There's reasons why you want to reduce emissions. Uh, so good gas mileage is a great thing to have. And that is one of the benefits of, you know, a smaller turbocharged engine versus a larger naturally aspirated engine. So as an example, going from the 2005 GTI to the 2006 GTI, where it previously had the 2.8 liter VR6 and then went to a 2 liter uh, in line four, there's right. also one eight, yes. Uh, so the one eight was also in 05, and then 06, the only option for the GTI was the two liter BPY. That's going to be a timing belt driven direct injection two liter turbo. Now we know. Now we know. And so both of those engines, 2005 VR6, 2006, two liter turbocharged engine, 200 horsepower. The turbocharged one does hit that peak horsepower sooner. And as you would imagine, it hits peak torque way sooner. So at 1800 RPM, you're getting 207 pound feet with the 2006 turbocharged inline four versus the 2005 VR6, you're getting 195 pound feet at 3200 RPM. So more torque earlier with a turbo, the car weighs 300 pounds more. That's kind of, I was surprised. They added a lot of weight in 2006 yeah, they, to the they, GTI. It was, it was a huge redesign. A yeah, they redesign fattened it up. Mm -hmm. It's a pig. Of but a regardless, better fuel economy. I didn't write the numbers on my sheet. I'm gonna go find those numbers. I'm, I'm gonna sit here awkwardly and not talk to you and just do this to this VR6. And he's back. All right, so what's interesting about, you know, the car weighs 300, about 300 pounds more in 2006 versus 2005 with this engine here, and yet it's able to achieve better fuel economy. 21 in the city, 29 on the highway. 
versus 19 in the city, 27 on the highway. Now that's only a two mile per gallon difference, so combine 22 versus 24, but that's actually a 9% difference. And when you're considering that the car is a little over, you know, a little under 300 pounds heavier and it still has a 9% improvement in fuel economy and more torque, I mean, that's a pretty huge right. difference. And I don't think it was really uncommon for people to see low 30 mile per gallon on the highway rather than that 29 that it was rated for. Again, fuel economy depends so heavy on how, how right. you drive it. Yes, absolutely. So number three is actually size. Now, we're not talking the difference between a W12 and an inline four. The VR6 footprint is actually not that much bigger than the four cylinder. And that's actually one of the really awesome things about the VR is that it's only, what did we measure, two inches, two inches yeah. longer and an inch or so wider than a footprint of a four cylinder. But you are also not having the enormous size of a V6 or, you know, width or an inline six right. length. Right, so from a naturally aspirated standpoint, you know, you're getting a lot more power in a much smaller footprint. But regardless, an inline four cylinder is smaller. And yes, you're adding in that turbocharger and that takes up space, uh, but space is critical. Uh, when I used to be a real engineer before just doodling on whiteboards, uh, one of the tasks I had to do was design a cooling system. And I was told, Jason, here's your little box. Uh, make a cooling system work in this box. And so the, the size of my radiator was completely restricted because I only had this much space to work with. So engineers love to have extra space. It gives them flexibility. You know, it can change your suspension geometry. It can change how much steering angle you can have with those front tires if you have more space to turn them in. Uh, so, you know, a lot of things can change based on the size of an engine. It gives you a lot of flexibility. You could make it nice for mechanics it to work on. It does help. It does help with technicians working on vehicles and making maintenance, doing maintenance and repairs. Or you could just shrink the size of the car so that the mechanic has no more room to work Which, with. Which, let's be honest, <laughs> that's what the overall goal is anyway. But regardless, uh, size is a benefit to the smaller four-cylinder engine, uh, which gives all kinds of benefits out there and can overall help, you know, if you can reduce the size of the car, you can also pull out some weight and there are, of course, tons of benefits of removing some weight. Right. I think by the time you get the VR6 fully constructed and then all the components to the turbocharger fully constructed, the weight is not huge, but even saving 50 pounds on the front yeah. end can really change the driving experience of a vehicle. Absolutely. Now, the fourth thing we're going to talk about is consolidation because it's very beneficial for a company uh, to offer less overall options. It's yeah. cheaper for them to produce a larger quantity of you know, one thing than five different things of that same overall quantity. Uh, and so I think you can probably talk a little bit about, you know, the engine right. options right. in the Volkswagen world. And you can actually take and do more thorough engineering, a better job. That's why certain car companies that may only have one option or two engine options across their entire line don't have to worry about seven different oil filters and six different air filters. They have one oil filter, one air filter yep. that fits everything. Um, but when it comes to the VW engine, the VWs and the VR6s, as they move more towards the MQB platform, which shares components exactly across the brand, it does make it a lot easier to just have one engine option or two engine options across the board instead of having a 1.8 turbo, a four cylinder, a VR6, uh, a diesel option and all that. It, it, yep. it makes the car more affordable and you can really focus on that one engine and make it of better quality. It drops the parts of maintenance prices because the parts for maintenance are more affordable. I mean, even doing maintenance, speaking of maintenance, doing maintenance on a four cylinder, right? right you lose two spark plugs. Yeah, uh, so two you, pistons. Two, two spark plugs, rocks. two pistons, less oil in the crankcase. So everything comes down quite a bit. Another cool thing, you know, with a, with a two liter turbocharged engine, you can put that in a GTI, then you can slap a bigger turbo on adjust, play with your boost a little bit and put it in the Golf R right. and you can have, you know, a significantly more powerful, much more thrilling engine that's, you know, based on the same platform, uh, not a huge differentiator uh, between like going from a two liter turbo and then to a VR6 where you've got two completely different worlds. And back in the days where this was a really common Highline option, you know, a tune or a chip might net you 30 horsepower and 40 pound feet of torque where now when you're tuning a yeah. two liter for 600 bucks, you're getting 50 horsepower and 80 pound feet of torque. Yep. And it completely changes the driving experience of the vehicle in a better way, every single way possible. You know, as a VW enthusiast, as a VR6 enthusiast, my heart will always belong to the Mark IV R32, right? It is the pure 
R32 model, in my opinion. Fast forward to the Golf R in 2017, other than the nostalgia that I have for that Mark IV, that car is a yeah. far superior car in every yeah. way. The new Golf R is amazing. <laughs> it is an amazing vehicle. Or, you know, take that into the Audi line with the S4. And even Audi has dropped the VR6 from their, their platforms now. And their Highline stuff, they're doing five-cylinder turbos. Or they're simply running modified two-liter turbos. Uh, Porsche really was never huge in the VR6 world. I yeah. think only the Cayenne. Uh, was the one that had that option. That's mostly because it's essentially a Touareg. So four good reasons there for the manufacturer and also a couple good reasons, maintenance and tunability, you know, for those who are buying it right. uh, because, you know, they're going to want something that they can play with for less money overall right. and as still an, have some amazing uh, improvements absolutely. from. As an enthusiast, I can do more for less money on a tune. As your average driver, it, the lifetime overall is going to be cheaper to maintain in most instances. Yep. So I think that concludes. Uh, Charles is actually going to be building up this engine on his channel and putting it into his... 98 GTI. 98 GTI. The last year of the Mark III GTI. The white Wookiee. The w white Wookiee. White Wookiee. White Wookiee. Okay. Rhymes with cookie. Yes. And so you should subscribe to his channel. Please. I'll put a circle on his face. Put a circle on my face. Wait, I think my face has to be a little lower. Quit and moving. The circle This is where move. the circle has to be, though. Oh, okay. Because I have yeah. that box. Where Perfect. Put I'll put it spot. right there. And you should click on that. Uh, and I'll maybe put some other videos we've done because we've done oh, a good number of videos. This is like our 10th video, I think. Yeah, we've done, uh, you think 10? Uh, let's lay wager, I think 10. Okay.